whenever I see anything coming out of any news on the war coming out of Ukraine, I can't help but think about that scene. It's a classic scene out of a movie called Blazing Saddles. <coughs> I'm kind of dating myself, bringing that up as a reference. However, it's a great scene. Picture this. It's early in the film. And this town is making preparations to welcome their new sheriff. And this is like 1850s, 1860s maybe. And it's like in the mid-Texas someplace. And they're all excited because they got a new sheriff coming. The last sheriff got killed by the bad guys. And they built this platform and they have all these this banner welcome sheriff i think they misspelled sheriff who knows <laughs> and all these white folk are all happy and they got the best fucking sunday dress on and they got the pies and the cakes it's it's big doings in this little town <laughs> so down the down the road they can see him the sheriff's coming the sheriff's coming and every time the guy tries to say once he realizes the sheriff is up Dong, the bell goes off. Because they're ringing the bell because they're happy. The church bell. <laughs> and they're all excited. Yay! And they strike up the band and these guys are playing. And it's Cleavon Little. <laughs> in this tan outfit. Riding tall, high in the saddle. With this tan hat on. Uh, <laughs> and a big old sheriff's badge. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I think, I think his name is Cleavon Little. Uh, he's black. And the guy was trying to yell, the sheriff is a N word, but the thing kept ringing. And when he gets up to there, all of a sudden the music just goes, <laughs> people are like, huh? And so, of course, naturally, they assume. Uh, that the sheriff, the real sheriff, was on his way. And, of course, the uh, black man killed him and took his badge. <laughs> so they decide they're going to kill Cleavon Little right off the bat. He's not there three minutes. And they got a posse ready to go, and they got their guns, and they're going to kill him. All of a sudden, they got pitchforks and torches in the middle of the day. <laughs> so what does Cleavon Little do? He's walking back, he's walking back, he's got all this angry fucking crowd of, of white folk, townsfolk coming at him, and they're getting ready to kill him, and they're yelling the N-word at him. <laughs> and he's walking back towards the sheriff's office door, and uh, he grabs himself like this and puts a gun to his head and says, Get back or the N-word gets it! <laughs> of course he didn't use the word N-word, but takes himself hostage. Brilliant. Brilliant tactic. And I think about that scene whenever I see anything taking place in Ukraine. And it's not because Zelensky is the sheriff. It's because Zelensky and his handlers are the sheriff. And we are the townsfolk. Because what makes that scene work, what makes that scene funny, is not the fact that he takes himself hostage by putting a gun to himself, grabbing himself and putting a gun to his own head. <laughs> what makes it work is the fact that the townsfolk, a couple of them step forward, they're like, ah, oh, and they're confused, but the rest of them grab him, hold him back. I don't know. I think he means it. And they all agree, okay, well, okay, well, let's calm down. Let's not do anything rash here. <laughs> Where are the townsfolk, boys and girls? That's what they think of us. That's what they think of us. We're that stupid. Hello, 
I am Scott. Today is the 10th day of April 2022. It is a Sunday. It is bright and early. I have no idea what time it is because that thing's not working. 8.30 in the morning. It's going to be a nice Sunday in Tampa, Florida. I am Scott. Bo is behind me and there is no co-pilot in the co-pilot seat that I know of. No, she's sitting down there. Hi, Cricket. How are we doing? What do I mean by this? I mean, these stories all coming out of Ukraine. One after the other after the other. It is clear that the damage being done to the civilians in the parts of Ukraine that are not Donbass. Well, even the ones who are in Donbass, the, the 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 damage and the harm and and the and the and the killing and the bombing uh, and the slaughter of civilians being done in Ukraine right now are being done across the board. This is what I get. I need to get an editor to be able to take these things out. I apologize. The local homeless guy. Again. The people committing these atrocities against the people of Ukraine are, in fact, Ukrainians. It's not just Zelensky. It's his military. They're the ones who are doing it. And it is obvious it is as obvious as a black man surrounded by a bunch of white folk, town folk, in a small town someplace in Texas in 1850s, taking himself hostage. And we are supposed to be so dumb that we can't recognize that. There's no question about what happened in Busha. There's absolutely no question about what happened in Busha. <laughs> they just had come out a, a week before that and told you that the intelligence agencies will lie about everything coming out of Ukraine or Russia in general in order to promote their agenda of regime changing that country. So they can get in there like they did in the Yeltsin days and start chopping it up and putting it on the auction blocks. They also have told you, as bad as the situation is, with the Great Reset on the way, the purpose of the Great Reset is because the Ponzi scheme that is our unregulated free market economy is on the precipice of complete collapse. They need an infusion of new money, of new resources. So, of course, the only thing big enough at this point to <laughs> patch up the holes in the Titanic would be something the size of China or Russia. And my guess is because China owns so much of the United States and our economy, Russia just, they, they, they picked Russia as the target. Now, you can debate the, 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 the reasons and the whys and the wherefores until the cows come home, but that's the reality. Here, again, this guy has more time to run around and talk to the Knesset in Israel, the Australian uh, uh, parliament. Now, of course, he's doing walking tours of the streets that they've cleared uh, with, Bar with Boris Johnson from the UK. This is, it is absolutely ridiculous. This guy is in the middle of a war with Russia, and he's got all this time to do all these junkets and all these PR fucking campaigns because all he wants is more fucking weapons, more fucking weapons, more fucking weapons. And he wants fly, uh, uh, no fly zones. He wants engagement from the United States. 
direct military engagement against the Russians. And in order to achieve these things, in order to get the, to, to build the world consensus that Putin evil and Russia must be stopped, he's killing his own people, repeatedly killing his own people. And not, not just the ones in the Donbass and the breakaway republics, but also his own people anywhere else. In the country. People who, by the way, voted for him in 2019 because he promised to mend ties with Russia and to mend ties with the uh, ethnic Russians and, and Ukrainians, <laughs> the ones in, in the breakaway republics and Donbass. <coughs> he promised the exact opposite of what he's doing. And so people in Western or Westernized or Nazified Ukraine voted for him to do that and in turn now he's bombing them there's no question about what happened in Bucha there's also no question uh, what happened in Kamatorsk I, I, I think I'm pronouncing that incorrectly but I'm going to say it again Kamatorsk that was the biggest thing for the last two days once the evidence was coming out that the Butcher thing was done by the national police, which were infused with the Azov Battalion and other nationalist Nazi organizations or groups, because it's, Azov is not the only one. Um, once it came to light, the evidence was being, uh, was, was overwhelming, that it was not the Russians who did that. But in fact, it was the Ukrainians themselves who did that, killing what they believed were collaborators, people with white things, on, bands on their arms, people who didn't want to fight with the Russians or the Ukrainians. They're the ones these Nazis killed. Once that was obvious, they had to have another one. And so they launched quickly uh, a missile targeting a train station in this Kamatorsk which is just, I think, a little bit outside of the breakaway republics, but still in Donetsk, I believe. Because they didn't want them leaving that town. So they bombed the fucking train station and they killed 57 people of their own people. Of course, it was all Putin, 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 horrible Putin. If you look now, there's, you can hardly find a single goddamn story on this. And this is just a day out of it. You can hardly find a story on this. Everybody fucking came to the conclusion. It was definitely Putin. End of story. Turns out, it was a type of fucking missile, the Tochka U, that is Soviet made, but is so fucking old, the Russians don't use them anymore. The only one in the entire area that uses them is Belarus. And no one said Belarus did it. They said Putin did it. They said Russia did it. Well, it turns out uh, they have proof that it came from an area under control that is under control of the Ukrainian forces. That's why they're not talking about it anymore. It's proven. It's proof. Positive. <laughs> He was talking about, Zelensky was talking about giving an interview after uh, a thing with the EU, another PR fucking uh, gig for the actor, uh, the little diminutive tiny man, who during this fully staged walkthrough, uh, they made sure to have him walk past some old guy who was shorter. They must have worked hard to find a guy who's shorter then Zelensky, there's a, there's a video of him meeting Tom Cruise, and he's clearly three or four inches shorter than Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise is 5'7". Not that it matters, but they do these kinds of things. They find some small little guy and say, okay, you walk down the street here, and the whole crowd will walk past you, and Zelensky will make sure he walks right past you. He probably get his hands handcuffed behind him, just to make sure. <laughs> but 
he was talking to the uh, reporter after the EU thing, and he said that somebody from the, a leader from the EU actually had the fucking audacity to ask for proof uh, that what happened in uh, Busha was actually done by the Russians and not someone else or staged. Oh my God, how dare somebody ask for proof as he's holding himself hostage. How dare somebody ask for proof that there's actually someone here holding me hostage. It has become so obvious, these little tricks of theirs, and now they're saying there's going to be another one. The Russians just recently said, announced that they have intelligence <laughs> that captured Russians are going to be killed using chemical weapons and then staged someplace uh, to stage a chemical weapons attack. That happened. We did that. We did that in Syria. Uh, we used uh, ISIS and the white, not ISIS, but uh, uh, al-Nusra and others. Al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, uh, offshoots to do that very same thing <coughs> and called it a chemical weapons attack from Assad. They have information that that's going to happen again. Russia does. And they published it. Doing exactly what the United States intelligence agency said they were lying for. Well, if we, if we, if we tell you a lie, then they won't do it, even though they know they weren't going to do it in the first place. That's the logic that we're supposed to fucking listen to when someone's holding themselves hostage with a gun to their own head. That's the logic we're supposed to listen to. However, that's exactly what the Russians did. Their intelligence agencies came up with their planning on killing a bunch of the Russian POWs. They've already got videos of them shooting uh, Russian POWs. <laughs> and even the New York Times has to admit those things. Okay, that, 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 that's true. That did happen. <laughs> I just thought it was it's sad really because that's the that's the humor that's the joke it's not that Cleavon Little takes himself hostage it's that the people who he who are who are watching him who he's doing it for are so stupid uh that they can't understand, they can't see what's right in front of their fucking faces. And that's how we're being treated today. Uh, who knows what the next one's gonna come out to be. Um, a lot of people are doing a, a, a bunch of good work out there in terms of um, exposing this stuff. And I'm keeping up with it and I'll post more of it Monday and Tuesday. I'm sure there's gonna be another uh, false flag and I, even, I, 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 I don't even feel comfortable calling them false flags because they are so obvious. <coughs> There's a video, a bunch of kids singing and dancing. I wanted to show you that. I should have showed you that. And Zeke Heiling, all about, you know, uh, save Russia, uni save Ukraine, unity for Ukraine, uh, say, long live our patriots, long live Ukraine, long Ukrainian nationalists, hang the Russians, all this shit. And what's sad about it is their leaders are killing them. Their leaders are killing them while they're singing about how wonderful Ukraine is, Zikhail, Zikhail. Their leaders are killing them on behest of people outside Ukraine. That's literally what's happening over there. Будь проклят Порошенко, Зеленский и все его прихвостни. Смерть. Я взять этих врача, блядь, убить их. Убить этих украинцев. Они, они нам дома разрушили до такой степени, что пиздец, блядь. Мы снимаем квартиру, разлетелись окна, в дребезги. Украина, 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 вот там-то и дело. Вон, сколько домов побито. Это все Украина, все Украина. 
The whole prop, he's saying the whole fuck, the whole thing is all about Ukraine, 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 nationalism. It's all about Ukraine. And he points back to the buildings that have been destroyed and says, that's what Ukraine did. Ukraine did that to Ukraine. And they're doing it on behest, on the, on the behest, at the behest of other countries. Lastly, I'll leave you with this. This is Sarah Abdullah. She posted this, and this is the uh, Irish member of the EU, uh, and she's got a few choice words uh, about how this whole system, how, how this whole situation is panning out. Uh, she doesn't go into what I've just talked about, although certainly not talking about blazing saddles. However, she does make some really good points about sanctions. And that sanctions have never worked to stop war, have never worked to save people in a country. Uh, what she doesn't tell you is sanctions have always been used to push countries to war. And I'll give you one fine example. And that's Japan. And what resulted from that was Pearl Harbor. But have a listen to what she has to say, and we'll let her, uh, Clara Daly, take us out on this. Have a good Sunday. I would love, colleague Jambaski, to tell me any circumstance in which NATO has played a productive role or delivered peace anywhere. History has taught us that sanctions do not end military conflicts. They do not bring peace. They the make the people conflict. suffer, not the oligarchs, the people, the people of Russia, the people of Europe. And they're not going to help save lives because the more arms you pump into Ukraine, the more the war will be prolonged, the more Ukrainians can, will die. And it might sound radical, colleagues, but the answer to war is not more war, it's peace. And peace isn't delivered by the barrel of a gun, it's delivered by diplomacy, by dialogue. You can wish away your continent's history, but we share a continent with Russia. We will sit down with Russia. There will be a negotiated peace, and this organization should be promoting it earlier rather than delaying it and making sure that more Ukrainians die. Your feigning of sympathy rings hollow. It makes me sick, to be honest with you.